Welcome to the Tennis Channel Studios and Tennis Channel Live. No Eagle, the great Chanda Rubin, and of course, Nick Pereira, who we've heard throughout the day. And Nico, we're glad to have you as well. Uh, we just saw a great match between Stevie Johnson and Marin Cilic. Johnson comes away with the win, but it was a little bit tougher, certainly in that second set, than maybe he would have liked, Chanda. It got a little tricky that last game, especially when he lost the first point, the first couple of points. I would say that double, the, the uh, AC hit, the 11th ace of the match at 1530, that was kind of the MVP because I know he had a huge <laughs> side of relief once he was able to tuck that point away but he played a good clean match and it was impressive the way he held his nerve he was touch and go there on that <laughs> love 30 point I tell you that much but a great win for Stevie Johnson and much needed one it's a subpar year for a player of, of his caliber one and three in Grand Slam so, so he'll be happy to get through Silic who is at number four in the world right now but we know it's a world time player lacking in confidence but still huge win for Johnson Oh, well, you want to talk about a big win let's go back to earlier today in Antwerp Francis Tiafo coming out against Dushan Lajovic, world number 25. And man, Nico, this was an impressive performance from Tiafo, certainly returning serve. Totally different conditions in Antwerp. Very fast court, which favored Tiafo. I'm very glad for him. He's won a challenger a couple of weeks ago. He looked right on the ball, floating through the court. Very aggressive. The ball is really did it to him, but. In, on the other side, Lajo, which is a guy that has been playing on the clay for a month and a half. First, first tournament back on the indoors, and he was a bit out of rhythm. Tiafo took full advantage of it. We saw the best shot from Lajo, which is that backhand, but Tiafo was all over it. Look how close he's playing to the baseline, and nice closing there. One, from Big Fo. Won 83% of his first serve points, and certainly that return game broke three out of six opportunities in the match en route to the straight sex win. He will face the winner of Salvatore Caruso and Dan Evans in the next round. But Chanda, uh, Nico mentioned it. He won a challenger just two weeks ago in Italy. Starting to play some solid tennis as of late. What have you seen from Fo? Yeah, I think it's been a little tough uh, since the restart for Francis Tiafo and going and playing that challenger event winning it, you know, getting the matches under his belt and winning a tournament that, you know, in some ways you feel like you, you should win, you know, in terms of your ranking and in terms of experience. For him to do that, I think, is a real confidence booster. You saw it in that match. I mean, he started great. I think the serving, his aggressiveness, especially in, in the clutch and those key moments, that's the type – that's the, the type of energy you have when you get matches under your belt and you really feel confident in your game. I just feel it's great that he's gone down to the challengers to win again, and you could see it in the smile at the end. But you are close to that camp. I've seen you on that box. And it's just <laughs> great to see Tiafo just beaming again on a yeah. tennis court. He's gone through the rushing too much to the part where he was doubting himself. And I just love what I saw from him today, beating the number 25th player in the world. Yeah, back inside the top 65 and Francis Tiafo certainly making his way back up the rankings as he continues to win. As we move over to Ostrava, the last event of the year for most of the women on tour, and we had a couple of great matches earlier today. Annette Contivate and Ekaterina Alexandrova, two excellent players trying to go head-to-head. -head. Yeah, this was a battle in Contivate. She's so good from the ground, but there, after losing the first set, able to rebound and take the second. But in the third, it was Alexandrova who got up 5-2. She had match points, yeah. and again, Contivate. She just didn't get discouraged. She stayed in there. She's been one of the one of the solid players on tour. She hits with good pace and depth. And there, it was the confident ball striking against a player who's been in form in Alexandrova over the course of the year. But it was Contivate who just kept holding her nerve there on that second match point, going for the big backhand. That's a strength of hers. And in the end, this was a huge win for her holding her ground there and you love to see at this stage of, of the year in these indoor events players taking it at the net being willing to come in and cultivate that's a good sign in her game cultivate wins it in two hours and 14 minutes in this match a grinded out victory and Annette cultivate is moving on it led right into this maria sakari christina pliskova and sakari who came in after a disappointing performance in paris really showed out in this one and this was a turning point in the match because because Christina Pliskova had break point to go up 4 2 poor shot selection. Sakari took advantage of it and really never looked back. She won five games in a row to take the end of the first set. And here, showing her athleticism, her movement, her ability to spring back into the court and take ground away and took some of that momentum into the second set. And Pliskova, to her credit, never gave in. She got a little bit better, kind of got right back to her game plan. But 
this point, it was Sakari who just had all the answers. The serve was firing. She got some three points off of that shot. And here again, when you look at the positioning and how she just kept going toe-to-toe -to -toe from the ground. Again, a good sign for her. She came in beautifully at some critical moments as well, so some opportunities for her at this stage. Really solid showing to win three and three in that matchup with Pliskova. And Nico, what'd you see out of Sakari in this one? Straight sets win. I just love the way she plays, and she's been at it for a long time, steadily climbing. I think she really took a big step when she was practicing with Thomas Johansson, the ex-Australian Open champion, who really showed her the ropes of big-time tennis, and I just think she's gotten stronger. She's getting fitter, and she wins a lot of matches that she shouldn't. And and I think we're going to be hearing her name in the second round, in the second week, excuse me, of the Grand Slams mm -hmm. very often. Yeah, we kind of talked about it during the match that she's been steadily moving up the ranks, broken to the top 20. She's had some some good wins. She beat Serena before the U.S. Open uh, on the restart, and it's been tough for everybody, kind of making the the transition to these different surfaces. But for Sakari, this is a real opportunity court that's a little quicker that she can be more aggressive on. Uh, this is a great chance for her to, to really make some noise and finish the year in strong fashion. We'll see what Maria can do in Ostrava. She continues to advance as we look ahead to our coverage on Tuesday here on Tennis Channel. We've got all the action for you throughout the week from all three events, and we've got a couple of fantastic featured matches. We're going to get to Coco Goff in the next segment, so guys, I don't want you to hit on that one, but what are you looking forward to, Nico? Or, uh, we'll start with Chanda even. What are you looking forward to on this list of these uh, fantastic matchups? So you're saying you don't want me to give it away? No, I don't. Coco. Okay, that I just gave it away. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm looking forward to that top one, Rabakina, who's been one of the on-form players. She's won, you know, one of the, the highest number of matches this year thus far against Kasatkina, who's finding her way back and is such a fun player to watch. I'll be interested in that one for sure. Yeah, one more American on the program with Tennis Sangren against Herbert. But to me, it's all about Yannick Sinner receiving a wild card this week. I can't wait to watch more of this young that you know played so well against Rafa in Roland Garros and he seems so mature beyond his years and we're going to be enjoying his tennis for a long long time. Yeah, the 19-year-old is at the, the top of everybody's minds after what he did at Roland Garros, making it to the quarterfinal and really going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, nearly taking that first set off of Rafa Nadal. We've still got plenty more to come. On